thank you very much. And it was a good pronunciation of the city for university. And I thank the organizer very much for inviting me to this uh, exciting meeting. Um, so, so, so I will, uh, um, well, I will talk about iron channels, but uh, uh, epilepsy is a severe disease and there is really a need for better treatments. And there are many people suffering from epilepsy and it's really problematic that about one third of all patients, they have a pharmacoresistant disease. And uh, so, so there is a need to find something better for them. And traditional uh, anti-epileptic drugs, they block sodium channels. But there is, we know that for retigabin, as we heard from the last speaker, it is an M-channel opener. It has an anti-epileptic effects, but it also has uh, other effects and has been withdrawn from the market. So our goal and what I will talk about here today is a search for selective KV7.2, 7.3 uh, ion channel openers. And it's, um, it will be a biophysical aspect of this. Um, so this is the voltage-gated potassium channel, and, and we have seen a lot about it during this meeting. Uh, this is based on the um, chimera structure, KV1.2, 2.1. And as we also heard yesterday, we have uh, upstate or activated ion channel models or ion channel structures, but there is really a lack of uh, downstate or closed uh, ion channel models. But I will show you in my next slide or next, next slide about um, a downstate, a possible downstate. Um, so, so how can we modify ion channels? There are, of course, a number of known alternatives, and I will start with some known uh, animal toxins, and they are acting on sodium channels, some are acting on potassium channels, so this is a generic ion channel, it's not a specific potassium channel. So we have batrachotoxin from the aeropoison frogs, we have a number of uh, spider toxins, and we also have a classical tetrodotoxin from pufferfish and scorpion toxins that are plugging the uh, entrance of the channel. And what's interesting with the spider toxins is that they are acting on the voltage sensor domain in the periphery. Uh, a classical drug is lidocaine. Uh, it's a local anesthetics, and um, this is blocking the uh, internal pore of the ion channel. And then, as we have heard, uh, retigabin is acting also on the pore domain and bend the gate open, so it opens the M channel. Lidocaine, of course, is acting on sodium channels, but it's very promiscuous, it's acting on a number of ion channels. And then there are also uh, some um, drugs or, or small molecule drugs that are acting on the voltage sensor domain on top of the voltage sensor domain. And we heard yesterday about uh, the GX674 that's uh, inactivating sodium channels, but we have also done a study published in JGP last year, where we can show that similar type of compounds, the biaryl sulfonamides, are opening potassium channels by binding to almost the same site. Uh, but what I will talk about here today, that is two other types of molecules. So one is the polyunsaturated fatty acids, and they are opening potassium channels by binding to the voltage sensor domain. And the focus of the talk will be on resin acid derivatives, resin acids, and here it's exemplified by the hydroabiotic acid. And both of them are negatively charged at physiological pH, and this is important. So, uh, very briefly about the voltage sensor movement. Uh, we did a study several years ago where we used cadmium bridges, tried to lock the channel in open and closed states. And this is one a double mutation. When we add cadmium, cadmium acts as glue. So it, it makes it much more difficult to open the ion channel. You can see it on the, the, both the GV curve and the time course. So this is a closed state interaction. But we also found a number of open state interaction. In this case, we, we open the ion channel, we shift the GV in negative direction, and we slow down the closing of the ion channel. And we will see if this works. Um, I 
it starts here. So this is the voltage sensor domain, and it's now I. Ah, okay, so this is not, it's not working like this. So I can't, ah, so if we go back to the, is it this trick? Yes, okay. So I, I, you, you saw the movement once. <laughs> um, it's, uh, so can I point here? In the, yes, here. Um, so, so what you saw was that the, the S4, the red one, is moving a considerable distance and in the down state, uh, all of these uh, blue uh, arginines, they are down to this position or lower. And in up state, all of them are above uh, the middle of the uh, membrane. And it's also it's a clear rotation of the voltage sensor uh, in the last step when we open the ion channel. So uh, we, we found early that polyunsaturated fatty acids, I will jump back and forth a little bit between the polyunsaturated fatty acids and the resin acid derivatives, but I will start with the polyunsaturated fatty acids. Uh, they open a uh, voltage-gated ion channel, and we started with a shaker potassium channel. It's a KV1 type uh, potassium channel, but that will continue then with the KV7.2, 7.3 ion channel. Um, and uh, so it opened it by shifting the, the voltage sensitivity in negative direction along the voltage axis. And here is a dose response curve of, of the M channel. So it's, it's fairly sensitive. So by applying just a few micromolar of this uh, polyunsaturated fatty acid, we opened the ion channel. And, and what is the mechanism? We came up with what we call the lipoelectric mechanism. So we proposed that... that uh, uh, the, the fatty acids are inserted close to the voltage sensor domain ion channel, and when it's negatively charged, it attracts the positively charged voltage sensor. Uh, if we used uh, neutral compounds, nothing happened, and if we used uh, positively charged compounds, you pull down the, the voltage sensor, and then you close the ion channel. And this is seen here, shifts in the GV curve. And, and what's critical for this mechanism to be, be true is, of course, that the charge of the polyunsaturated fatty acid is important. And, and this is shown up here, but we'll show you some data. Uh, but also, it's important the charge uh, of the voltage sensor. So if you modify the voltage sensor, we should modify the effect as well. And here, uh, we did uh, pH experiments. So by changing the, the pH, um, from to a high uh, pH, um, you you make the compound negatively charged, and we have a large shift in the GV curve. If we instead use a much lower pH, um, the, the, it's uncharged the compound, and there is no effect. And it's very very clear uh, pH dependent here. So definitely, the charge of the compound is important. And secondly, we also mutated uh, the ion channel. So, so Nina, who is in the audience here and who has a uh, poster, uh, she modified or mutated the top of the voltage sensor S4 a lot. And this is the, the best solution. She added two arginines on top of S4, two extra arginines. And as you can see, there's an enormous increase in effect of polyunsaturated fatty acids, and this is caused by a very large shift of the uh, GV curve. And then, of course, we were interested. I mean, polyunsaturated fatty acids, they are interesting, yes, but they are probably difficult to make into drugs to make them selective for certain ion channels. So we, we came across uh, these resin acids. They are coming from tree resin, and uh, they look like this. Uh, so this is one type of them, a pimoric acid, and it has a carboxyl group, which is, sens which is important for the effect. And as you can see, at, at pH 9, we have a quite large increase of the current and a clear shift of, uh, of the GV current. And this is in the wild type shaker channel. And then when we used our super channel, uh, 3R stands for three important arginines. You can see there is a massive increase in the ion current. And the, very, very large shift of the uh, GV curve. Well, very large, everything is relative, but in my world, this is a very large shift. 
Um, and also in this case, we tried to, to uh, modify the, the charge and uh, we have a very skilled chemist. So he made it into a carboxyl group and here he made it into a positively charged group. And also both these were, were pH dependent. So clearly the charge is, is important for our effects here. And so where are these compounds binding, both the polyunsaturated fatty acids and uh, uh, the resin acids? Uh, so we did uh, molecular docking and molecular dynamics. And here uh, in top, we have a, a, a polyunsaturated fatty acid. I think this is the ducosahexaenoic acid. And it binds to the voltage sensor domain. I'm just showing the voltage sensor domain here. And as you can see, it's binding between segment four and segment three, clearly in this cleft. And we did similar type of work for the resin acids. And as you see, we had almost exactly the same uh, position. And this is a side view. You can see it's really located down in the lipid bilayer and the charge group is just close to the surface, but we think it's embedded in, in the lipid bilayer. And, and here I think we have some, uh, well, I don't think we, we have some data. Um, and we mutated this residue to either positive or negatively charged or this residue here. And the channel or the voltage sensor is really rotating during the very last step when you're opening the ion channel. And what we found was that, that depending on the side of S4, you got opposite effects if you had a positive or negatively charged uh, amino acid residue. So compare this one and this one. And this really supports, again, that this is an electrostatic mechanism and S4 is rotating during the last step. And, and this is one way to, to affect, uh, the, or to open the ion channel. And, um, um, so here is our chemist, Xiong Ye Wu, and he has made uh, around 200 compounds for us. And uh, what I just want to show here is that uh, by doing some very minor modification of the channel, you can increase the effect very much. And um, so by, by changing this um, isopropyl group to a chloride, there is a massive change in, uh, in the opening of the ion channel and shift of the GV curve. Um, and then we also wanted to study, the, 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 to modify the charge in different ways. We know that, of course, if you have negative charge and positive charge, this affects uh, the action of it. But we also speculated maybe if we prolong the stalk here, you add atoms, so you put it further away from this anchor. Will you increase the effect or decrease it? And, and we made all these compounds. And what was really, really interesting was that we could increase the effect by, by having three atoms. But when we came beyond three atoms, the, the effect was gone. And, and uh, this can be explained by a, a quantitative electrostatic model. So if this is short, it will be attracted to, so this is our resin acid derivative. The charge will be attracted to the voltage sensor here. But when it's going beyond three atoms, suddenly it finds the position out in the water, then it's ineffective. Uh, and then of course, if you know that we had good anchors and good effectors, couldn't we combine them? And this is ex exactly what, what Malin did here. So she made a combination of a very, very good anchor with a very good effect, and we got this molecule here. And as you see, the, the, the dose response curve is uh, clearly shifted to lower, uh, lower concentrations. So it was clearly an effective compound. And then we, we, we also simultaneously did experiments on the KV7.2, 7.3 channel, the, the M channel. And what's the take home message here is that we have very similar effects on the M channel as we had on our super shaker potassium channel. And you can also see here that if we had a stalk of three atoms, we had a much, much larger effect than if it was just one, two or five atoms. And, and uh, how about selectivity? We have just shown that these compounds are opening uh, the ion channels, but is it possible to make them selective or are they extremely promiscuous? And I will show you in two slides um, that it is possible to make them uh, selective. 
So here we have two compounds, and they're very, very similar. It's, I don't see, but it's, it's brom bromine, I think, up here, and it's a chloride down here. So, so we, we just shift this, we change the identity, and we shift it, uh, and there is, both of them are quite uh, potent openers of the ion channel, and uh, we have a shift of the GV curve. There is also a slight increase in the amplitude of the GV curve, um, which we don't really understand, but it's probably increasing the open probability a little bit, but primarily it's shifting the GV curve here by, by 40 or so millivolt. But this is the interesting. Now we tried it on 7.4, and this is the problem with retigabin. Retigabin is acting on 7.4, not only on the M channel. And uh, as you can see, that one of the compound, this one here, it has a huge effect on the Kevin 7.4 channel. But this other compound has almost no effect on, on the iron channel. So it is possible to make them uh, selective, the compounds, which was very encouraging. And in my, my very, very few s last slides, I will show you some sim and simple epilepsy model. We used the zebrafish larvae epilepsy model. And it, ha it has been used um, in other labs and so on. But um, we we pre treatment pre treat it with uh, different compounds here, and then we immobilize it in uh, a gel like substance, and um, then we add uh, this compound which is it's initiating uh, epilepsy, uh, and then we do a recording of course. And, and uh, in, in, this is a control recording here. There is no activity. These are extracellular recordings. And then when we add this PDZ, uh, there is a huge increase in activity. And it looks like this if we amplify it. And we measure uh, the number, the frequency of these uh, bursts. And we also measure the length of these bursts. And then when we add one of our compounds, I'm not saying that this is the best one, but this is one of our compounds, uh, it's basically gone, uh, this activity. It's, it's like the, the control recording we had in the beginning. And here we, I show data for, for four of our compounds. And uh, we start here with uh, the control DMSO. We add this PDZ. And there is an increase in frequency of these bursts, and there is an increase in duration of these bursts. Uh, carbamazepine, which is a sodium channel blocker, is not working in this model. But what's interesting is that retigabin has a very, very clear effect on this increase in frequency and duration. Also, alproic acid is uh, acting in this model. And as you can see, all our compounds tested here have uh, a, a clear effect on, on this anti-seizure um, activity or, or this seizure activity. And it's, uh, some of them acted 10 micromolar. In some cases, we have to use 30 micromolar. Uh, so to summarize, um, we I have shown here that the resin acid derivatives, they open uh, both KV1.1 type channels and KV7.2, 7.3 channels via an electrostatic mechanism on the S4. And it's possible to modify both the anchor and the effector, and this can increase uh, the effect. And also, which I think is, is uh, exciting, it's possible to get selectivity um, uh, between closely related ion channels. And, and lastly, I show that they compass, they have some anti-seizure activity. And, and uh, people who have done this work is mainly uh, Nina, whoops, I, this was not, uh, this, this is a nice figure, but <laughs> I was not going to show it. Uh, so it's Nina and Malin, they are here, they have done most of the work. Um, and uh, um, we have collaborated with people in Copenhagen and here are our chemists at Linköping University. So this is the wizard, Xiong Yivu, he has done most of the compounds. Uh, we have some people doing the electrostatic calculations at Linköping University. Uh, modeling was done mainly by uh, Erik Lindahl and his group at uh, Stockholm University. And the, we also started a collaboration with uh, Sofion 
uh, which I think is very exciting. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much for perfect timing. Very nice presentation. Uh, questions? Did I see a hand going up? Oh, there. Sorry. Uh, how about the sensitivity of KCNQ1, uh, KCNE1 complex to these compounds? Yeah, um, um, so um, some of them we have tested, not very many, but some of them are, are active. So they're clearly opening this uh, KV1 channel. And I think this was done together with KCNE1, I think, yes, yes. Because we have in, in, in previous investigations shown that there is a huge effect if you have the K, KCNE1 with, with or without KCNE1. But so far we haven't explored all of them with respect to selectivity to KV7.1, no. Hi. G given that these compounds are charged by nature, do you think they're going to get into the CNS in higher species? Um, um, I, I don't know, but uh, all of them are not permanently charged. Some of them have a carboxyl group, and I guess they can probably pass uh, blood-brain barrier in an uncharged form. I think so. Thanks. Can I ask a question? Um, in the resin, do the resin acids have an effect? Are they kind of killing the insects that try and... I, I, I don't know really, but I, I think they are doing something. Probably it has been evolved to, to kill the insects or so, but I, I have to study a little bit, yes. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.